Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Slangi. So, Black Friday is upon us. Please don't buy skincare products that you do not need because you're falling for a hype or you saw your favorite influencer <laughs> using them. So I did this video to quickly remind you the essence of what you need in a skincare routine so that even if you're buying something, you'll be buying something that you do not have already. In essence, any skincare routine needs a cleanser, moisturizer, exfoliator, SPF, as well as antioxidant. I can bet with you that these five things that I've mentioned, you already have them in your skincare routine. And the chances are, even if you don't think you have them, if you go through your ingredients, you might find that you have them. So let's talk about um, cleansers and what would be the grounds of you changing your cleanser. People with combination skin and oily skin tend to um, have a good experience with gel-based cleansers. With combination skin, the trick is always that we need to balance the oil production while not taking away a lot of natural oils on our barrier, leaving the dry parts of the face dry. So gel cleansers tend to work best and they also work best for people with normal skin. So you can change a cleanser on such grounds, but if you have a gel cleanser already, then there's no need. People with dry skin need hydrating cleansers, so you can either get um, an oil hydrating cleanser or get a milk cleanser. If you already have these things, then there's no need for you to try out new products. Trust me, it's not worth it. So coming to moisturizers, in South Africa right now or any other regions where it is hot, our moisturizers need to be lightweight. And the reason is that there is already a lot that is happening on our epidemics. We are sweating, there's dust, we are reapplying SPF hopefully and we are spraying ourselves with facial mist so it's layer after layer after layer of product and having a thick moisturizer will not help as much as the moisturizer needs to be lightweight it still needs to be rich enough for your skin type so if you have dry skin you need a slightly thicker moisturizer but light enough to be quickly absorbed by your skin if you have oily skin and you do not have a lightweight moisturizer then you can explore your options of which lightweight moisturizer will be budget friendly for you and will give you value for money. In all of this, I would advise that you stay clear of anything that has fragrance because sometimes you don't know that you have sensitive skin and you use products that have fragrance and that just aggravates your sensitivity. Okay, SPF. I'm coming a little bit closer because this is between you and me. Those of us that don't reapply SPF, okay? <laughs> It is a bad, bad, bad habit and we need to let go of it. I found a SPF that came in a form of a spray. So that's easier to reapply because you just put it in your bag and when you need to use it, take it out and spray it. The problem that I had was that it was a hydrating SPF. So it made my face look oily, so I didn't appreciate that. But people with dry skin, of course, that is beneficial. So in everything, you need to understand your skin type. If you have dry skin, then you're always looking for hydrating elements. If you have oily skin or combination skin, it might help to stay clear from products that have oil. So you are constantly looking for keywords like oil-free, will not clog your pores and also feel the texture and consistency of the product when you start using it and assess from there if your skin will tolerate it or not. I know that sometimes certain uh, moisturizers will have SPF in them. However, it's always best to have a separate SPF that performs that sole function to be an SPF. <laughs> so we need SPFs that have um, that covers both UVA and UVB. Check your SPF right now. If it doesn't have, it doesn't cover both, then yeah, you have a good ground to get yourself a new SPF. And also, if you don't have an SPF of minimum 30, then you also have good grounds to get SPF 30 or 40 or 50, depending on what the budget would allow. If the budget allows for an SPF 50, then voila, go for an SPF 50. So we've dealt with cleansers, moisturizers, as well as SPF. Let's look at exfoliators. So your exfoliators, I would advise and recommend, based on the research that I've done, that you stay clear from physical exfoliator. Anything that rubs against your face or scratches it, stay clear from it. Especially if you um, have skin of color, because anything that scratches our face, bites it, um, rapidly triggers our skin cells to renew themselves, has the potential of leading to hyperpigmentation, and we do not want that. So your chemical exfoliators are your best bets. 
They have oily skin, then salicylic acid. Salicylic acid can also work if you have combination skin that is prone to breakouts. If you have dry skin, then you need your hydrating exfoliator, so your lactic acid. Lactic acid is also good for um, skin aging. So if you want to introduce an anti-aging ingredient in your skincare routine, definitely look for products that have lactic acid in them. Everyone else can experiment with what is out there. You can be using your mandelic acid, glycolic acid. However, if you are of skin of color, your glycolic acid needs to be very, very minimal percentages. And on days where you use it, please apply um, Vaseline on the sensitive area. So on your lips, just here and on your under eyes if you don't feel like using petrolatum jelly then you can use a moisturizer first before using your glycolic acid then antioxidants your vitamin c's vitamin e and everything else that is an antioxidant we do have a vitamin c serums preferably stick to anything less than 10 percent l ascorbic acid and the reason is that the higher the percentages some people get burned even 10% some people still get burned um, other than the burning some people struggle with sensitivity so it's always best to stick to the lower percentages so if you've tried vitamin C in the good percentages and it still did not help then you can opt for your azelaic acid as well as niacinamide will still help perform the same function I need to mention retinol vitamin A the different variants of vitamin A I'm currently using 0.3% uh, retinol and the acceptable dosages or the ones that tend to not irritate us a lot especially if you're in your 20s 30s so this will be 0.1% 0.2% or 0.3% maximum 0.5% retinol if you're getting the ones that are um, prescription based of course the dermatologist will know the right dosage for you and will prescribe that you use that one tried retinol in the past and it still was not working then you have good grounds into looking into buying azelaic acid as well as niacinamide the last two things that I need to emphasize here is number one, with any new skincare product that you buy, always make sure that you patch test it and you gradually introduce it into your skincare routine to build tolerance. Secondly, if you're in a humid hot place, you really need a lot of hydrating ingredients. You can introduce facial mists based on your skin concern and your skin type or look into your skincare products that you have right now and look for the hydrating ingredients in there and if you have maximum hydrating ingredients in every skincare product that you have then you might skip the facial mist if you have any questions please feel free to ask in the comment section down below do not buy new skincare products that you do not need don't fall for the hype save money and stick to what you have unless you need to make changes of course do take care and keep well i'll see you in my next videos bye bye I know life, you know, is fair